Good morning, everyone. Someone once said, I don't repeat gossip, so pay attention the first time I say it. This week's Parsha talks about gossip, and it follows last week's Parsha, which is all about kosher. Said the Katzka Rebbe, there are many Jews who are very scrupulous, very careful to make sure that everything that goes into their mouth is not only kosher, but blot kosher. If only they were as careful that everything that comes out of their mouth should be blot kosher as well. The mouth is a two-way street, just like you have to make sure what goes in is kosher, you have to make sure what goes out is kosher as well. And this week's Pasha talks about what would happen to a person in biblical times if they spoke Lashon Har, they would get a form of saras, which is a white lesion on your body, a form of leprosy. But instead of going to a dermatologist, you have to go to the Kohen and be examined. And this was a sign that you spoke Lashon Har. Of course, we all know the story of Miriam when she spoke Lashon Har, gossip about her brother. She was quarantined outside the camp for seven days because she had saras. Why is the person quarantined? Not because they're contaminated and it's contagious, but because spiritually Lashon Hara is contagious. Why is it contagious? What's contagious? You catch it from me, the next guy catches it from the next guy, and on and on. So the person has to be quarantined. Gossip is also contagious. I tell you, you tell the next person, he tells the next person, and it travels from one person to the other like a disease. And a lot of people are affected by it. So much so that the Talmud says Lashon Hara is a triple homicide. Why? It says it kills three people. The one who speaks it, the one who listens to it, and the one it's spoken about. The Talmud also says that Lashon Hara is equivalent to all the three major sins. Murder, adultery, uh, uh, incest, and idolatry. Why? Because it leads to all the negative things, all the violence, all the hatred, all the terrible things that happen in society. The breakdown of relationships, of society, is all because people speak negative words about others. And so we have a terrible misnomer in our society, and that's free speech. I'm free to say what I want. And Torah says, no, 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 you're not free at all. There are a lot of limitations. There are a lot of restrictions on speech. Speech is a powerful tool that God gave us as human beings to connect with each other, to build a bridge between one soul and the other. Don't use it to destroy bridges, to burn bridges between people. So the Torah gives us, you know, today there's a multi-billion dollar business, skin care products. Torah gives us the best skin care products, which is don't speak Lashon Hara and you won't have the leprosy on your skin. But the Torah is not worried about your complexion. The Torah is worried about your, the, the complications that negative speech could cause in a society. And while kosher is a chok, it's a super rational commandment, this is such a rational commandment. Everyone could understand it. Yet, in our society, it runs rampant. And I always laugh because many newspapers have gossip columnists. That's like saying, I'm a Lashon Hara columnist. Every day I get up and scour the nation to see the juiciest Lashon Hara, and I put it into a beautiful article for millions of people to read. You should be ashamed that you're repeating Lashon Hara. But in our society, if you're a gossip columnist, you're a very high socialite. You're an important, you get invited to the best parties because you got the best gossip to tell over. And the Torah tells us this is forbidden. Lashon Hara is terrible. It's like killing three people. And therefore you shouldn't speak it and you shouldn't even listen to it. King Solomon said it best in the book of Proverbs. He said, Hachayim v'hamavet biyad halashon. Life and death are in the power of speech. Not only shouldn't you use your speech for negative things, to kill someone. And when I say kill someone, you could kill their reputation. You could kill their self-esteem. You could kill their standing in the community. You could kill their... Uh, their friendships, their relationships. Not only shouldn't you use it to kill someone, you should think of ways to use a speech to give life. Because the power of speech is so great, you could give life with words. And I'll tell you a story. Uh, in 1946, one of the Holocaust survivors was the Baba of Rebbe. His name was Rabbi Shlomo Halberstam. He came, he lost his whole family in Europe. He came to America, he lived in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And he re started rebuilding his community and became a great Rebbe with many, many followers. But as a young man in 1946, he wanted to help many of the refugees come to America. But there were very strict quotas on how many immigrants could come to America. So his congressman, he lived on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, the congressman for the 20th district of Manhattan at the time was a Jewish guy by the name of Saul Bloom. And he happened to be the chairman on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and he also was on the Committee of Immigration for the Justice Department. And so he called the office to make an appointment. 
It was very hard to get to see him. He got an appointment six months out. The Bab of a Rebbe at the time, he, was, uh, he wasn't the great Rebbe at that point. He was just a Hasidic Jew living in Manhattan. He traveled to Washington for his appointment. He had no money, he took a bus. When he got there, he didn't have money for a hotel. He slept on a bench in a synagogue. And the next way, day, he went for his appointment with Saul Bloom. And uh, he waited in the office for two hours, people going in and out. And finally, they called him and said, okay, you can go in to see the congressman, you have five minutes. He walks into his office, and Saul Bloom was known as a very strict guy, law and order. You know, the quota is the quota, X amount of people could come in and no more. And the Baba Rebbe wanted to plead with him to help more Jews come to America and find refuge. And he walked into his office and Saul Bloom was editing some letters and he didn't even look up at him. He said, how can I help you, sir? Oh, what's your name? And he's writing on his desk and the Baba Rebbe says, if I tell him my name is Shlomo Halberstam, uh, he's not going to get my attention. So he said, sir, hi, what can I do for you? What's your name? He looked up for a second and looked back down. He said, who are you? And the Baba Rebbe said, I am a lawbreaker. Saul Bloom stopped and looked up. No one ever walked into his office and said, I'm a lawbreaker. He said, what do you mean? He says, well, my entire family, my parents, my grandparents, my siblings were law-abiding citizens. And they followed the law in Germany. And the law in Germany was that a Jew had to be taken into the gas chambers and into the crematoriums and killed. And I am a lawbreaker. The law was you're not allowed to escape the camps, you're not allowed to hide in the forest. But I broke the law, and that's why I'm standing here today. And he said, and at this point the congressman had his attention, he said, there are laws that say that only a certain amount of Jews could come to this country, but our brothers and sisters in Europe are living in DP camps, malnourished, they need refuge, they need homes, and I'm asking you to help me bring more Jews to America. And Saul Bloom was so moved by this that Bubba Rebbe broke down weeping in front of his desk. And he was so moved that he started to cry with him. And he said, I will help you. And he became one of the strongest advocates in Congress for bringing more and more refugees. And that is his legacy till today. And he even did certain things that are questionable, helping to stamp visas that maybe weren't 100% uh, authorized and help bring many, many Jews through the Brooklyn Navy Yard into America to find refuge. And every word we say could give life or God forbid the opposite. And this week's parsha tells us make sure that you eat kosher and make sure what you speak is kosher as well.